Love Unbreakable. Download the Mobo Reader app to read the novel Love Unbreakable full story online. Chapter 1 Ex Girlfriend Returns. Reagan Hayes was a little absent minded at the moment. All she could think of since this afternoon was the doctor's words. Congratulations. You are pregnant. Suddenly, Mitchell Dixon pinched her arm hard. His low voice came the next second. Come back to Earth. What are you thinking about? Before she could respond to that, Mitchell kissed Reagan hard after holding the back of her head lovingly. He then went into the bathroom. Reagan lay motionless in the massive bed. Damp strands of her hair stuck to her temples and cheeks. She stared at the ceiling with her eyes brimming with tears. Her naked body was aching slightly. After a while, she took out the pregnancy test report from the nightstand drawer. Reagan had gone to the hospital because of an incessant stomachache. After a urine test, the doctor broke the news to her. She was almost five weeks pregnant. It came as a shock to her. She and Mitchell had always used protection whenever they had sex. After racking her brain, she traced the time of conception. It turned out to be last month after a party. Mitchell had driven her home and suddenly asked her at the door if she was in her safe period. Now, it dawned on her that the period was far from safe. The pattering sound of water came from the bathroom. Mitchell was her husband. They had been married secretly for two years. He was her superior at work, the president of the Dixon Group. Everything had happened so fast. She was newly employed in the company when they accidentally had sex for the first time after a party. Days later, Mitchell's grandfather fell seriously ill. It was then he proposed a fake marriage just to fulfill his grandfather's dying wish. They signed a prenup, agreeing to hide their marriage from the public. Their union could be terminated at any time. It was an unconventional thing to do. However, Reagan only considered herself lucky at that time. Never in a million years did she think she would ever get married to the man she had a crush on for eight years. She delightfully agreed. After their marriage, Mitchell was very busy. He spent most of his time working. Reagan wished she could spend more time with him at home. However, she was rest assured because there hadn't been any rumors or scandals about him with women in the past two years. Except for his mild indifference, Mitchell was a perfect husband. Reagan had mixed feelings as she stared at the pregnancy test result. In the end, she decided to tell Mitchell the truth. She also wanted to tell him that she hadn't learned about him for the first time two years ago and that she had been crushing on him for many years before then. The shower in the bathroom finally went off. As soon as Mitchell came out, his phone rang. He went to the balcony with only a bath towel and answered the phone. Reagan checked the time and found that it was already midnight. She felt a little uneasy. Who would call Mitchell at this ungodly hour? Mitchell spent a few minutes on the balcony. Thereafter, he returned to the room and stripped away the bath towel. His figure was a sight to behold. The packs on his belly were bulky. His buttocks were hard and his legs were long and muscular. This man was a catch. It wasn't the first time Reagan was seeing him naked. Nonetheless, she still blushed and her heart began to race at this time. Mitchell, oblivious to the wandering eyes on him, picked up his shirt and suit pants from the bed. He put them on and then knotted the tie with his slender fingers. His handsome face, which had a clear outline, made him look more dignified tonight. He was something to see now. Don't wait up for me. Good night, he said finally. What? He was on his way out. At this hour? Reagan's grip on the pregnancy test result tightened as she stared at him in disappointment. Unconsciously, she withdrew slightly. After thinking for a while, she blurted out, It's already so late. Mitchell's fingers froze on his tie. With a faint smile, he pinched her earlobe and asked, Are you still horny? Want me to make you come again? Hearing this, Reagan blushed to the roots of her hair. Her heart thumped against her chest. 
She was about to say something when Mitchell let go of her and said, Be good, okay? There's something I have to do. Don't wait up. With that, he headed for the door. Mitchell. Reagan quickly ran and caught up with him. Mitchell turned around and looked at her seriously. What's the matter? There was a tinge of coldness to his voice. An icy cloud hung over them as they stared at each other. A little distressed, Reagan asked in a low voice, I would like to visit my grandma tomorrow. Can you accompany me there? Frail and ill, her grandmother always wanted to see her. As a result, Reagan wanted to take Mitchell there to assure her grandma they were happy. Let's talk about it tomorrow, okay? Without agreeing or declining, Mitchell left in a hurry. Several thoughts were threading Reagan's mind as she took a shower and got back to bed. She couldn't sleep a wink. After tossing and turning for a long time, she got out of bed and made herself a warm glass of milk. A few notifications from some online blogs came into her phone. However, she wasn't interested in them. She was about to swipe them away when one of them caught her attention. The familiar name made her click on it. The news read, famous designer, Lauren Murray was spotted at the airport with her mysterious boyfriend earlier today. Lauren was wearing a bucket hat. The man's figure was vague, but the outline of his body was enough to show that he was dashing. Reagan zoomed in on the picture. The next second, her heart dropped. Mitchell was the man in the picture. So, he cancelled the afternoon meeting just to go pick up his ex-girlfriend from the airport? This realization settled like a boulder in Reagan's gut, rendering her flustered. Her hands trembled. Subconsciously, she dialed Mitchell's number. The dial tone brought her back to her senses. Just as she was about to hang up, the line connected, and a voice came from the other end. Hello. It was a particularly gentle woman's voice. Reagan froze for a second and then threw the phone away. She suddenly felt sick in her stomach. Bile rose to her throat. Covering her mouth, she ran into the bathroom and threw up in the toilet bowl. The next morning, Reagan went to work on time. Mitchell had tried to get her to stop working after they got married. Stubbornly, she insisted on making her own money. Mitchell didn't kick against her decision, but he asked her to work as his assistant, helping him with the daily chores. The head assistant, Mateo Jenkins was left to take care of the major affairs Mitchell had. Mateo was the only Dixon Group employee who knew about their marriage. Since inception, only male assistants were hired for the president's office. Reagan was the first and only female. Her employment broke the protocol. As a result, other workers couldn't help but wonder if she was involved with Mitchell. It took a while before they realized that Mitchell never gave Reagan special treatment. Strangely, this made them despise her even more. After all, no one would last long in anything while taking advantage of her appearance. So, it was strange Reagan kept her job for this long. At this time, one of Reagan's colleagues handed her a document and ordered her to take it to Mitchell's office. Mitchell didn't return home last night. Reagan was so worried that she didn't sleep at all. All she kept thinking about was the woman who answered his phone when she called. Did Mitchell spend the night with that woman? Reagan already knew the answer to that, but she was still in denial. It was difficult for her to come to terms with that fact. Reagan tried to remain calm now. She reasoned that no matter what happened, she deserved a result that would be rewarding for all the years she spent loving Mitchell. This couldn't be all for nothing, right? She pressed the elevator button calmly and went up to the president's office. Before she walked out of the elevator, she smoothed her hair to make sure she looked good. She had arrived at the office, only to see that the door was ajar. A man's voice came. She halted instantly. Come on, man. Do you have any feelings for Reagan or not? The voice belonged to Louise Stevens, a childhood friend of Mitchell's. What do you mean exactly? Mitchell asked in a cold voice. You know exactly what I mean. Louise clicked his tongue impatiently and added, I think Reagan is a good girl. Isn't she your type? Do you want me to hand her over to you? Mitchell asked carelessly. You know what, forget it. The scornful laughter of Louise sounded particularly harsh in Reagan's ears. They were talking about her as if she were an object. Reagan took a deep breath and tightened her grip on the document. Soon, Louise's voice was heard again. By the way, I saw the gossip news about Lauren's mysterious boyfriend this morning. That was you, right? Yes. Well, well, well. That woman still has you wrapped around her little finger. You always want to please her. Louise sighed and continued to tease Mitchell. You two spent the night together. As the old saying goes, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Tell me, did you two? Their conversation was like a thunder exploding over Reagan's head. Her face turned pale and her body was as cold as ice. Lauren and Mitchell spent the night together. Absence made the heart grow fonder. Every word drove a knife into her heart. Several whispering voices filled her head at this time. She suddenly felt lightheaded. Her vision became blurry. She held the wall and took a step backward. Suddenly, the door was opened from inside. Reagan? Download the Mobo Reader app to read the novel Love Unbreakable Full Story online.